This was a bookcase that has been in my house for many, many, many years. When I redid the hallway by the kitchen to be a pantry, this was there. So I thought to myself, I need to redo this and I think I can make it look kind of mid-century modern. So you can see that it's not in very good, very good condition and my father actually put the bottom wood piece on there and um, he put the backing on there and this is not original at all. In my opinion, it's a very ugly 1980s bookcase. So I thought to myself, I will just sand all of this down, remove all of the horrible orange looking stain and make it look pretty. Now, what I thought was funny, actually, when this is all finished, is I put this on Facebook Marketplace and I said mid-century modern style. And um, I said it was black with uh, white oak trim, which is true. And um, some lady wrote back to me and said, you painted this black? Well, of course, she didn't see how it originally looked. And in my opinion, this right here where I'm sanding is veneer. There is no way I can make this look really pretty. And even if I did the whitewash on it, ah, the way it turns out, in my opinion, is much better. So I took a long time sanding this all down, as you can see. This is about times uh, eight speed. And the original part is only on the outside. The inside is what my dad did. And uh, the wood isn't oak. Anyway, so you will see how it turns out. I am using my surf prep sander, which I am not a sponsored person for this. I just really, really, really appreciate it. I've had it now for about six months and I have no complaints about it. It sands so nicely. And if you are a person who have a lot of projects to do or you sell furniture, I would highly suggest it. I sanded it down with 80 grits, mostly to get the stain off and also the varnish. So now I am using a tape that is for painting. And the key point to know about this is you must remove it when it is still wet. If you remove the tape when it is dry, I have found that sometimes part of the paint will come off with it and it looks horrible. Now also, the areas where I'm taping down are a lot either wider or narrower than the tape. So I do pull parts off of it and just cover it all up. And I was shocked how well it worked. So luckily, once again, my father has so many things in his garage. I did not have to go buy this. It was already there, but, uh, I am trying to use up things so that when I use them in the future, they'll be fresh. Using old things don't work so well. So here's what I taped up and I got this spray shelter. Here's what it looks like. And I actually got this because I was part of a online question group that got $300 uh, for payment for answering questions. So I also, with the money, got this Wagner spray paint machine. So I'm testing it out. And I first thought this is really kind of uh, not very smooth. However, I do think it's amazing because if you buy spray paint, the VOCs or the volatile something, yeah, yeah, I haven't looked at, yeah. Anyway. If you use spray paint, it is so stinky. This has very little smell. 
I first started spraying it and didn't have any kind of uh, protection on me, but the blowback from the paint was getting in my eyes. <laughs> I know. And so I put my eye protection on and I did put on my uh, respirator. So you can see I'm wearing everything like I should and sometimes I am very naughty. So here's what it looks like the first day. The next day I turned it on its side to get the other parts of it. And uh, I tried to figure out how to make it spray more smoothly and I called up the Wagner uh, 800 number and the woman who answered the phone was lovely. She talked to me about what to do with it, and I only had to wait like a minute for a person, a real person, to talk to me. And um, so I followed her directions, and of course, I was testing it out with any with no paint in it. And then once I put the paint in, it worked perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Don't judge me. Well, go ahead and judge me. But yes, I was uh, trying to make it work without paint just to make sure it worked. So now I am pulling off the tape that I have, and I just think this is so gratifying. And it's so crisp. And I was very happy with the way it turned out. There were a few parts on the corners that a little bit I didn't put the tape on right or whatever I didn't do right. And so I fixed that, and I am just so pleased with the way it turned out. When I watch videos with other YouTubers and they remove that paint, I just think it's so great. Now, I this is on a little rolly um, platform, and the reason for that is because, number one, it's better for videoing all of this happening, and number two, it's really a lot easier to turn around um, when I'm spray painting. So... On other videos, I have watched people put their furniture on like little uh, pyramids or paint cans, and then you, they have to walk around the, I, the item. So I bought this spray tent, and my husband helped me put it up because the directions, in my opinion, weren't that great. And it's very big, so it takes over half of my garage. And so then I also got this yellow cover, at the ReStore for five bucks. So it's supposed to be a part of a tent, but I'm using it just so I don't get paint all over my garage. The reason why I know that is because about maybe 12 years ago, I was redoing a friend's piece of furniture and it was red. And I didn't use a spray tent, I didn't use anything, and to this day, there is red on my garage floor, which makes me sad. So now you can see how it looks. And I am touching the parts that I haven't painted to move it around. And yeah, look how shiny that looks. Just the paint. Now this paint was the $2 paint that I got at Lowe's as a uh, mist tint. Now these are maple legs that I purchased from Amazon. And at the time it was about, I don't know, six months ago I bought these. I bought a whole bunch of them because I think they're great. They were about $20 uh, for a set of four. They are so easy to put in. And the reason why I then use Dixie Bell white wax on the trim of this piece is because I wanted the oak to look lighter to match the maple. Now all you have to do is line these up and find a drill bit that's about the same size as the hole. Now when I looked at ours, we did not have any that were the same size. So you can see that I'm kind of going around in a circle to make it a little bit bigger. And it works like a charm. So easy. I also use the same technique on the side, the bedside tables that I sold a couple of months ago. And I used the Dixie Bell on that as well. So then you just 
uh, use the hammer and drive it in. And then you drill the pilot holes and then you put the screws in. Now, my father, as I mentioned, had kind of changed this little bookcase around a little bit and there was a little bit of breakage on the wood. So what I did is I put some wood glue in there to make it a little bit more solid, not only in the holes, but also around the area that had uh, broken a little bit off, but it dried nicely, no problem, no complaints, and it was great. So I put the four legs on and um, when I put them on the first time, if you're a person who notices things very well, you will see they kind of look like they're going inwards and I do not like that look. So I did not videotape my, um, I put some little shims underneath um, the supports for the legs so make the legs out a tiny bit. So the way mid-century modern looks is the legs kind of go out, if not straight. They do not go inwards at all. So I did have to uh, fix that. So here are the pilot holes. Make sure they're about a little bit smaller than the actual screw. And here's the screwdriver that I just love so much. I don't know the brand right now, but my father's had this for years. And sometimes when we use it too much, it starts to smell like burning <laughs> electrical, which is bad. So here's what it looks like. And here's what I use for the wood trim only. Okay, so the wood trim, I use the white wax on there. And the black, I used the Fusion uh, wipe-on uh, wipe poly, no, it's not polyurethane. Anyway, the Fusion, you'll see the picture of that coming up. Here is what I used. So easy to use. So I also had some oak mirrors that I got from another piece, and I put that for sale with this bookcase for $200 on Facebook Marketplace. Here's what it looks like, and here's the mirror. And I did not get any um, buddy who was interested. So after uh, about a week, I put it down to $175 for the bookcase and the mirror, and nobody wanted it. So I told my lovely husband, hey, let's keep it for ourselves. So I put it upstairs and here's what it looks like. Hello, that is so cute. Anyway, thanks for watching and let me know down below if you think you would have bought this for $175. Have a great day, subscribe.